Bonjour! Welcome to another vlog. Paris is going to hate me. <laughs> I am making a video today because I am going on a trip. By the time you're watching this, I might well be on that trip. I am heading to Paris. It's a very, very spontaneous trip. I'm going with Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin and Sabine from Sabine's Book Nook, and I cannot wait. I'm going Tuesday to Thursday, except I'm staying overnight in London on a Monday. So it's a little bit of an adventure. It's a very spontaneous adventure, but I want to do more spontaneous travel in 2023. I'm gonna be making a vlog for the whole thing, but I thought I would make a little spontaneous reading vlog in advance of going. So I wanted to try and pick up books set in Paris or in France to read for this video. Now I'm kind of kind of give myself a guide. I'm not necessarily expecting to finish all three of these because I also have a pretty busy week anyway, but let me show you what I've kind of picked out as a TBR for this vlog. I have already started Ernest Hemingway's A Movable Feast. This is depicting his time in Paris in the 20s as an unknown author. He is talking about his memories, his experiences of the city, what it was like trying to be a writer at this time, and it's honestly absolutely delightful as a reading experience. I watched Midnight in Paris last night. It's a rewatch for me. It's one of my favourite films. I love it. And Ernest Hemingway is depicted as so candor and so serious in that film, and I hadn't read anything from him before, and that film has so perfectly captured his tone from this book. Book. He's very literal and he is very honest in his writing and that is a big thing that he talks about in this. So this talks about Paris, it talks about his writing, it talks about a love of books. There's already been a chapter on Shakespeare & Co which is one of the bookshops in Paris that I cannot wait to visit. So I'm about yay far through, I'm using a pen as a bookmark because I am annotating this book, but I just think it's a really interesting reading experience. I don't often lean towards non-fiction but I had heard that this one was brilliant, especially if you are going to Paris or have spent time in Paris. So I thought I would give it a go. So this is the first book I will be reading for this vlog. Now these other two, I don't know whether these will be the only two that I try and get to this week or whether I will add different ones in if I can find any, but I was just scouring my shelves before filming this to try and create a rough TBR. So I have Paris by the book. This is by Liam Callanan. Callanan? Callahan? Honestly, the font is very swirly, I cannot tell. But I've had this on my TBR for a long time and I suddenly looked on my shelves and was like, yes, I probably need to read this now. This is following a woman whose husband has gone missing. He's left her some clues that indicates that he's in Paris. She goes to Paris and she finds an unfinished manuscript written by her husband that gives her further clues. So she ends up trying to look for him in this city and also I believe takes over a bookshop in this time? I don't really understand how that part comes into it, but yeah, the blurb says she takes over a crumbling bookshop with her two young daughters, only to realise that her husband might be closer than any of them ever imagined, but what if he doesn't want to be found? I've had this one on my TBR for ages, it's happening. And I also have I'm Mona Lisa, this is by Natasha Solomons. This one I got recently in the Waterstones Half Price on Hardback sales. It's definitely out of my reading comfort zone, but I really want to give it a go. So this one is generally more of a France setting than specifically a Paris setting, but I want to try this, I really, really do. I think this is from the perspective of the painting of the Mona Lisa. It says over the centuries, few could hear her voice, but now she's ready to tell her own story in her own words, a tale of rivalry, murder, and heartbreak. Weaving through the years, she takes us from the dazzling world of Florentine studios to the French courts at the Fontainebleau and Versailles. I probably butchered the pronunciation of Fontainebleau. Fontainebleau? And Versailles. And into the 20th century, I, Mona Lisa, is a deliciously vivid, compulsive, and illuminating story about the lost and forgotten women throughout history. I think this sounds really interesting. I've wanted to read this one for a while. I'm a bit obsessed with the cover and it's perfect timing to read it for this vlog. Now I'm filming this a week before I leave for Paris, like exactly a week. So there's a pretty good chance I won't be able to necessarily get to all of these books. And I know there's only three of them. One of them is very teeny, but I have, as I said, a busy week anyway. So I'll see what I can get to, but I thought it'd be a fun vlog to make. And it's kind of like a little prelude to my trip. So I hope you enjoy this video. I hope I enjoy these books and as I said there will be a Paris video coming so if you don't want to miss that do hit the subscribe and the little bell button wherever that is. It's gonna be a good time. I'd like to blame Gavin for today's purchase. I've just ordered Giovanni's room which is going on my TBR for this vlog if I can fit it in but if not I'm gonna read it whilst I'm in Paris. Gav said he was gonna be reading it whilst in Paris and I looked it up and it looks great. Okay I've got a quick reading update. Last night I finished Ermingham... Um, um, Last night I finished Ermin... Um, uh, I finished Ernest Hemingway's A Movable Feast. I got through that part of the video. <laughs> I finished this last night. Uh, what did it come out as? Encore Par 4? Four stars? It was a very interesting read. I am now even more excited about Paris. I love that there was a whole chapter on Shakespeare and co. There was a whole section about F. Scott Fitzgerald. It was just honing in on the beauty of Paris 
and the creativity that it can untap and I really enjoyed Ernest Hemingway's narration style. It was mirrored so well in Midnight in Paris. The the tone that that actor took for reading his narration and reading his his character was just spot on. It felt like he was in my head whilst I was reading this. So I really liked this and I am glad that I read it because it's been on my TBR for a while and it was daunting me and now I'm very excited to explore Paris even more and see some of the spots hopefully in this book. I asked on Instagram if anyone had any translated from French fiction recommendations for me that were kind of small and somebody suggested The Mad Woman's Ball. This is by Victoria Mass and I already owned this. I didn't click that it was translated from French but I should have because it's set in Paris and it literally says on the front translated from French by Frank Wynne. So I am currently reading this. I'm about 50 pages in. This is currently centric around female hysteria and how as soon as women showed any sign of anything that might be like seizures and fits, anything like that, they are thrown into this medical facility that treats them as if they have hysteria. And it's unpicking that and at the moment we're just kind of introducing to being introduced to the characters and the situations that they are in and how they have ended up here. I can tell this is going to be interesting, it's already making me mad about men! So it's got that in common with Lessons in Chemistry, which I read a couple of weeks ago and got very mad at all men in the book. So this is doing a similar job for me, which I said when I was reading Lessons in Chemistry that I didn't know if I wanted to feel mad when reading, but I think I'm just going to have to accept that whenever a book talks about the shitty injustices faced in this world, it's going to make me mad. So I started this one because it's pretty skinny, I think it's about 200 and something pages. So hopefully I can finish this one early uh, in this week. And I've also started the audiobook for Paris by the Book by Liam Callan. Again, swirly font, I have no idea. This one is, I thought it would be a bit flaky wishy-washy in style, but it isn't. However, I really dislike the main character. Her husband has gone missing, but we're kind of getting a backstory as to how she meets him. And to me, she just is immediately unlikable with her narration style. However, I am intrigued by the mystery element and the fact that this is slightly more serious and thoughtful than I expected it to be. I'm heading into town shortly to add further to this TBR. I'm gonna be picking up the Paris bookshop. I can't remember who that's by, but I'll, I'll show you when I get it. But that is, again, Paris in the 20s, which is something that I am apparently really enjoying reading about. And it's like the origin of Shakespeare and Co, which is the bookshop in Paris. So I think that sounds perfect. So I'm gonna go grab that. I'm also going to be adding Giovanni's room to my TBR. I saw Gav say that he was gonna be reading that whilst we're in Paris. So I thought I would add that one because Apparently, you know, I don't have enough books to try and read within the space of one week. I have also realised that All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doer is set in France, which is one that I really want to read, but that is chonkier and I feel like it will take me more time to get through, but we'll see how I do with these. So I'm going to head into town now, grab some books, grab some lunch, and then hopefully after work and after I've Twitch streamed, get a bit more read of The Mad Woman's Ball. Okay, it is Wednesday. I'm about to head out, so I'm just going to give you a really quick reading update. So I have been reading more of both of these books. Paris by the Book, I have no idea where I'm up to in it because I haven't put a bookmark in because I'm listening to it as an audiobook. I don't know how much I'm liking Paris by the Book. I, I don't know. I'm intrigued by the mystery element and why the husband has gone missing. I had one thing in my head when I started this book that I kind of imagined it to be like, and it's definitely gone in a different direction. But at the same time, I just really dislike the main character. There was a bit I was reading this morning where she reads her daughter's diary and I just, and she was so casual about it. Like my daughter's asked me to read it. So of course I did. I'm like, she's so unlikable. And I've said before, I need to like at least one character in a book. And I think because she is so predominantly the main character and we're seeing her history, like her thought process now, it's very difficult to get past my dislike for her. However, I am intrigued by the mystery. I want to know what's happened to the husband. I want to know where he is and what has happened, like why he has gone, wherever he's gone, if he's okay. So I am invested, but I also don't like the main character. So that's Paris by the Book. The Mad Woman's Ball, I am definitely enjoying and it's definitely making me mad. Seeing the way the women are treated, oh, I just, oh my God, seriously, it just, why, why? It makes me so angry and this book is doing a great job of making me angry. We're seeing a couple of different women's experiences and perspectives and it's like the blame that's put on them 
for things that is completely out of their control or things that have happened to them that they just shouldn't have that kind of blame for. Definitely say if you are thinking about picking this one up and you feel you would need to do check out the trigger warnings for this because at times there are some more brutal things mentioned in it. I'm intrigued to see where this goes because it's very much still setting things up at the moment and it's not a long book and I'm about halfway through so I feel like it kind of needs to establish a bit more towards this ball element which I feel like is going to be the big catalyst of, of something happening hopefully so once that's started getting the ball rolling I'm hoping I feel like the story should fall into place a little bit more so those are my thoughts for now on both of these what they are doing I mean actually sorry the Mad Woman's Ball is less about the Paris setting whereas Paris by the book is a lot more centric around the fact that it Paris is like a big part of the story so this one is definitely making me even more excited. Every book I'm reading is making me more, even more excited. So that's my reading update. I also got book mail. Book mail, book mail, book mail, book mail books came in the mail. Hey! And also the bookshop because I went to the bookshop yesterday. I'm going to tell you what they are. Hey! So I got a couple of books. These two I am so excited to finally have. This is Grady Hendrix's How to Sell a Haunted House. I love Grady Hendrix's writing. This is The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. Both of these were pre-orders and I think they both came out on the 19th and it is now a week after that. So I was desperately waiting for these to arrive. And I'm so glad they have. Let me show you the stenciled edges of The Cloisters. Like, excuse me, are you kidding? That's so pretty. I love the color, everything about this. I mean, it's just, it's so pretty. So Grady Hendrix is a horror thrillery writer and this one is following, I believe a brother and sister who, his parents have died and they're coming together and dealing with their grief whilst also trying to sell the house that doesn't want to be sold. The Cloisters I think is kind of dark academia-esque. It follows a woman who's moved to New York. She wants to work at a museum and gallery and she ends up being assigned to the Cloisters which is the Gothic Museum and within doing so discovers there's a long lost tarot card that she has found from like the 15th century I think it is and she ends up getting involved in something quite dark. Very excited for this one. We have She and Her Cat. This is by Makoto Shinkai. I think there's actually two authors on this. Yeah and also Naruki Nagakawa and this is translated by Ginny Tapley Takamori which is who's the translator of Convenience Store Woman which was a really interesting people watching type of novel. This is again sounds a bit people watchy, it's following the lives of cats and how they observe the lives of their owners and how they can be there for what their owners need. It sounds incredibly wholesome, I've probably done a really pants job of explaining that, but it sounds really wholesome and lovely so I'm very excited for that one. Then we have The Paris Bookseller by Carrie Maha. This, I think I might have said this was called The Paris Bookshop yesterday, I meant The Paris Bookseller, this is the one that I intended to get today. This is set in 1920s Paris, I am just really enjoying reading about that era of Paris at the moment and the Bohemia Paris lifestyle, just, I love it. So this follows Shakespeare and Co's kind of origin story and how the woman who works there or owns it, hang on a sec, I need to check. She runs the shop and she meets James Joyce, the two become friends. James Joyce's novel Ulysses is quite controversial and is banned. So she is determined to publish it herself. And she basically in doing this runs the risk of losing her reputation and her heart as well. All in the name of the life-changing power of books. I think this one sounds very exciting. This is the one I'm going to hopefully get to next. And then I picked up Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. I'm really enjoying the autumnal cover for this one. This one follows an American man in 1950s Paris. His fiance is away in Spain on vacation for quite a while and in that time he meets Giovanni who he ends up having a passionate fleeting affair with. And when his fiance comes back he decides to deny his true self and pick what is described on the blurb as the safe future as a married man and it's a decision that will bring tragedy. So that's my book haul. These top two are ones I'm hoping I can get to this week but if not then I will spill them into next week a bit but I'm very excited. During the day today I headed out with my friend Immy to Henley on Thames. There will be a separate vlog coming for this that I'm really excited about but we had such a nice time and then I got back in the evening and decided I would watch Amelie just to continue my French theme for the week. I hadn't seen it before which I just I don't know how I hadn't but it was so beautiful and I absolutely loved it. Okay it's Friday and I have had a really busy week but I have managed to read a fair amount of these books, nearly finished with both of them and I don't actually think I'm really enjoying either of them. So let's start with Paris by the Book. This is the one I'm listening to as an audiobook and I think I've already said I don't like the main character. I find her pretty dislikable and she continues to be dislikable for me. She just says things, I'm like why? At one point she goes out with a man in Paris 
and she specifically says she didn't she didn't bring her wallet because that's his job as in to pay is his job and i just i don't like it when books reinforce those kind of stereotypes in that way and that annoyed me but that's probably me being quite picky but also the whole point of this is she's looking for her husband she's gone to paris with her children she set up shop there and she's looking for her husband she's not really bloody looking for him though to be fair the children do point this out to her so this isn't something that is completely oblivious in the whole novel, but she's not... Why is she there? I can't work out why she's there, other than she is obsessed with Paris. There's a lot of talk of the film and the book The Red Balloon, which I watched as a kid, and it's a bloody sad film. If you've watched it, you know. It's beautiful, and it's all set around the streets of Paris, and it's this boy following... Hang on, on the cover here, I've just realised his beautiful red balloon. So he's got this red balloon, he's very happy with it, and he's basically, he's taking it around Paris. And this character is really, really into this story. And this is a big part of a lot of her inspiration of like why she wants to be in Paris. And I'm now kind of wondering if she is there not to look for her husband, but because her logic and her brain has told her he must be there, because really it's where she wants to be because she's manipulating a lot of situations to work in her favour and it just all seems a bit strange. I mean there's a lot of talk of like is her husband dead and I just I don't really understand what the grounds for that is. He's obviously missing, there's no trace of him, but there's kind of no further discussion of that and yet some, suddenly everyone's like oh he's dead. But like there's, it's like it suddenly jumped from him being missing to him obviously being dead and I don't know it just it's everyone's like it's very clear, it's obvious this is the only route and as the reader I'm like um is it? Is that the only option? Because we're seeing a lot of other things going on here that I feel like could be explored, such as clues that he has left for his wife that she's just not really... I mean, she's kind of telling people, but people just think she's fabricating it and doing, like, kind of seeing what she wants to see, which I suppose is the whole point of her character anyway. I don't know, I'm kind of contradicting myself now, I'm aware of that. But generally, I feel like this is trying to be cleverer than it is, and it's leaving a lot of things open for me that I feel like need to be closed off or need to be a bit more solidly plotted. It just feels like it's got the potential, but it's not quite delivered it for me, which is also what this one's doing unfortunately so the mad woman's ball this is my physical read i'm nearly finished with this i'll definitely finish this one later today i feel like this one started off setting up for quite a while the setup was taking longer than i thought it would in a book that's just barely over 200 pages and now i feel like that's because the plot isn't really there for this one i don't i couldn't really tell you what the plot is there's this one element to it that this girl has been committed to this hospital because she can see ghosts and people think she is insane because of this and that's why she's there but she really can see the ghosts and she is trying to get out with the help of one of the women that works there in exchange for information that she can give this woman. Now I think that is pretty much the main hook of the plot and it's not very hooky. <laughs> what I find interesting about this book is the representation that it gives for this time and for how women were treated. I find that element of it interesting, but in terms of like an actual plot and story, it's not really doing it for me, unfortunately. So both books, a little bit disappointing. Also, this one isn't really about the Paris setting. This one, I've said this already, this one definitely is, but this one hasn't really brought in the Paris setting as much as I'd have hoped it would. So I kind of want to finish both of these today if I can, and then move on to whatever it is I'm going to be reading next. The Paris Bookshop Bookseller? I forgot what it's called, but that one. That's what I'm going to read next. But I did get some books as well on Wednesday from an Oxfam bookshop, which was such a good Oxfam, Oxfam bookshop. So let me show you what I got. So I got these three. If you watch my fictionary video, I've already vaguely spoken about these. So I got The Book of Hidden Things by Francesco Dimitri, Anne Pachette's The Dutch House, and The First Time Lauren Paling Died by Alison Rudd. This, this, the first time Lauren Palin died, sounds so interesting. It's spanning over a couple of different decades and it's following this woman who, or this girl that keeps dying. And when she dies, new lives begin for the people who loved her. And she also enters into a brand new life. But in each of these lives, there's this man that keeps disappearing. And in each of her lives, she sets out to find him. This one sounds good. I'm very intrigued by this one. I hadn't heard of this one before seeing it in the Oxfam bookshop. Then we have the book of hidden things. I love a book about books and this had some very good reviews on the blurb. So this follows four friends who have a pack to meet up the same day every year in their small hometown in southern Italy. 
Art, the charismatic leader of the group, has always been adamant about the pact, but this year he doesn't show up. Searching for him, the friends make a worrying discovery. Art has been farming marijuana, a very dangerous activity in mafia-controlled country. Asking around in town, they hear bizarre and incredible rumours that Art cu cured a young girl of leukaemia. And then amongst the chaos of his house, they find a curious manuscript written by Art called The Book of Hidden Things, which promises to reveal secrets enchanting as flames and just as treacherous. It's a book about books. There's a mystery element. I'm happy. So I was with my friend Immy on Wednesday and she told me that this was fantastic. So I picked this one up. So this is The Dutch House by Anne Patchett. Danny Conroy grows up in the Dutch house, a lavish mansion. Though his father is, a dis is distant and his mother is absent, Danny has his beloved sister Maeve. Maeve with her wall of black hair, her wit, her brilliance. The siblings grow and change as life plays out under the watchful eyes of the house's former owners in the frames of their oil paintings. Then one day their father brings Andrea home. Though she cannot know it, her arrival to the Dutch house sows the seeds of the defining loss of Danny and Maeve's lives. It sounds interesting. I love the art entanglement into it as well. There's a bit of a theme with the kind of books that I'm picking at the moment. So that sounds really good. But these are the three books that I picked up. It was such a good Waterstone, uh, not Waterstones, Oxfam Bookshop. It was in Henley on Thames. There is a vlog coming, but, or will have already come out vlog coming? I don't know. There's a vlog, it's coming or it's already out, but it, there was a great selection. So I got these three. I'm having one of those Fridays where I am so busy and I have so many things to do, but I am actually ticking them off my list. So I'm not procrastinating. <laughs> I'm getting shit done. I just, I, oh my God, I've got so much to do. I'm going out later tonight with my friends. So I need to crack on, but books have been read, books have been bought, books haven't necessarily been enjoyed yet, but hopefully I can finish both those today and then start on my next reads hopefully. Okay, it's now Saturday and I finished these books last night. Paris by the book. <laughs> what more can I say about why I didn't like this book? The narrative was disjointed, it was jumpy, the characters, as I've said, were unlikable. I felt the plot was completely illogical and unbelievable when it felt like it was meant to be logical and believable. And I just don't think the characters' motives, multiple characters' motives, were in the right place and were things that I could get on board with. I gave this two out of five stars. I wanted to get to the end to find out the whole thread of the story and where that had been heading. And I will say I felt unsatisfied, very unsatisfied. So I didn't love this one, unfortunately, and I'm probably gonna unhaul it, but at least I know. The Mad Woman's Ball, different story with this one. Gave this three out of five stars, also didn't love it. And I found it very boring, however, I can see what it was trying to do and I think in the representation of the women in this story, I think in that sense it achieved that. I just didn't find it gripping and I felt frustrated that I wasn't getting more from it. I thought it would be really centric around this ball and it just wasn't at all. It was just like the build up to the ball. So I can see why people would enjoy this one and I liked the writing style of it. I just wanted a bit more from the story. So yeah, both of these disappointed me, but hopefully my next two reads will not. My next physical read is going to be The Paris Bookseller by Kerry Maher. I'm very excited about this one. It's the founding story of Shakespeare and Co. It's Bohemia Paris in the 20s. I'm ready for it. I've read around the first page just to kind of get a vibe for it and it's LGBT which I'm really excited about. My patrons recommended this one to me when I said I was looking for a book set in Paris so I have high hopes for this one. And I'm going to be listening to the audiobook of I'm Mona Lisa. This book is so pretty. I think this might be one of my favourite covers I own. I just, I love it. It's absolutely beautiful. And I also really like the green colour that we've got going on under the dust jacket. It's, it's just, it's a beautiful book. This one is one that I am daunted by because it's definitely out of my reading comfort zone. But one of the things that I want to do more of this year is push that reading comfort zone. So I'm looking forward to this one. And I thought if I did it as an audiobook, that would kind of break down the daunting prospect of it, which is why I love audiobooks. So I'm going to start this one in the car today. I'm just going to meet my friend Literary Lily, who has a fantastic YouTube channel that you should check out. So we're going out for the day. So I've got a good chunk of listening time as I drive to and from where we're meeting. So that's my reading updates. I have a full weekend to try and read as much as possible. Tomorrow I'm really going to knuckle down and try and read most, if not all, of the Paris bookseller. I need to plan which books I'm actually taking with me to Paris because definitely Giovanni's room is going to be coming with me and then I think I'll bring one other book. I'm really tempted by All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr because I loved Cloud Cuckoo Land. I thought that was fantastic and I would really like to read that one and that's set in Paris but I don't know. I, I'm, I'm uncommitted at the moment but I will let you know what I do decide to bring with me, hopefully, in this video. I don't know when I'm ending this. I don't know, I'm gonna get ready to leave now and I will let you know when I've made a bit of progress in both of these and I'm having higher hopes. Hopefully these two are gonna be better than the two I just finished.
I promise I have actually moved from this spot and that not all my reading updates are going to be in this spot for the rest of the day but I have moved, I went out yesterday, <laughs> I've read some books, I have some updates and I have some goals for the end of today. I don't know if they're going to be realistic goals but I'm going to tell you to hold myself accountable. That's what we're going to do. So reading updates, I have read a pretty decent chunk of I, Mona Lisa. I am enjoying this one. It's a very interesting read. It's definitely a very slow read and I do not think this will be for everyone. If you need very fast action, probably not for you, but if you're interested in seeing the characterization of a painting, for you. It's definitely different. Seeing Mona Lisa's perspective of events and seeing only through her eyes means there's a lot of gaps in the narrative. The time jumps, it goes all over the place really. It can suddenly go forward or back by about 100 to 200 years at random times. Listening to it as an audiobook when that happens has me a little bit lost, however the narration does write you pretty quickly. I've felt pretty emotional with this book, which I didn't necessarily expect. Generally it's definitely giving me a lot of different thoughts and feelings and I think it's very well written and I think it's very interesting and seeing how the painting of the Mona Lisa is treated and what that painting experience is through the eyes of the art is definitely very different and I think the personification of that art is a really interesting angle to take to show different periods in history and what was happening along those times. At the moment we are in the 1700s? Yeah, it's Versailles 1791 at the moment and then just to give you an example of how it jumps, the next chapter is Florence 1515. So it does go back and forth a little bit, but I quite like that because it really does knit together this story. It's just definitely a bitty story, but in a deliberate way. So this is really interesting and I'm liking it a lot. I'm hoping to finish this today. That is one of my goals. As I said, I'm listening to the audiobook of this. I have under two hours left of this, so not too long. And I do have bits I am doing around my flat. However, I'm pretty much done now for like the little tasks I had to do. I had to pack. I have packed. Got to do a bit of washing. I've tidied. I've cleaned. Everything is good to go. So I don't know how much little ad mini bits I have left that I would be listening to this for, but I might just sit and do a puzzle because it's actually World Puzzle Day today. So that would be very fitting. So that's my, my plans for this one. Then we have The Paris Bookseller by Kelly Maha. I really got properly into this one last night and read about 100 pages of it. And it's so good. I love the way that this is coming about and the way that we see the bookshop forming and the start of that and the relationship with all the different authors and the artists. It's just fantastic. It has such a great vibe about it. If you like the film Midnight in Paris, I think you will like this book quite a lot. Obviously it's just a historical fiction. There isn't the contemporary element that that film has, but it is set exactly in that time. We see many of the characters that we've met in that film as well. Obviously they're based on real people, but it's just fantastic and I'm really liking it. So my plan is as well today is to finish this book. Basically, I've had to change my plans a little bit for Paris. So I was meant to go on Tuesday morning. Now I need to go on Monday night. So I was staying over in London on Monday night and now I need to get the train, the Eurostar on Monday night instead of Tuesday morning because there's strikes in France on Tuesday and my train wasn't canceled, but it gave me the chance to move it for free. And I just thought it would be a lot less stress in my brain to just move it. So I've moved it now to Monday night, which has changed everything a little bit, but also I have now reminded myself, even if I was leaving to go to London on Monday night, to be honest, that I need all of my videos finished and edited and scheduled <laughs> before I go. So basically I wanna finish these two so that I can tell you about them in this video. And I wanna try and finish this video today. So that's the plan. I don't know if this is realistic because it's currently, oh no, it's 1.47, but I have spent the morning reading some of this and listening to a lot of this. So I have been doing lots of stuff. Progress has been made. I just need to keep making progress. So wish me luck. That's the challenge for the day. I'm setting the intention. Let's go. Have I just moved the camera from there to there to pretend that I've not been sat in the same spot since I last updated you about seven hours ago? Yes. Hello. <laughs> it's Sunday night. 
and I have been sat here for a very long time. <laughs> I've had a lot to do today. I really, really thought I would spend the whole of today sat on the sofa reading. I thought I would pack in the morning, I thought I'd do a live stream, and I'd chill on the sofa reading. That did not happen. I have been sat here all day. <laughs> I've been sat here though because I've been being productive. I have been editing a video that I had to have edited and had to have scheduled in before I go to Paris, and I have been sorting out some admin bits. I have been packing as well. I, do you know, I don't actually know where the time's gone, but, 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 I finished this book. So it's definitely been a productive day. I've done lots and finished a book. I just didn't finish the other book as well. I gave this four out of five stars. I really didn't expect to become so emotionally invested in a painting, but personifying this painting has been a fantastic feat that this author has achieved so well. The way that this art interacts with the artists and the relationship this art has with Leonardo da Vinci is just fantastic. Seeing the Mona Lisa and Leonardo da Vinci interact with each other was such an interesting reading experience and seeing history through the Mona Lisa's eyes was just so unique. I really didn't expect to feel so invested with this. I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I did because it's definitely slow paced. This will not be for everyone. The pacing is slow. The fact that it jumps around in time can throw it a little bit, but it also builds up the emotional connection that you have to the characters and the situation that the Mona Lisa ends up in and goes through and everything that she sees and experiences. And the fact that you have obviously the isolation element that you are only able to see through the Mona Lisa's eyes. So throughout this whole thing, you are only stationary with where she is. And while she moves around location, it is isolating in that sense. So it's definitely not gonna be for everyone, but at the same time, a lot of those reasons could be why it would be for you. So I really liked this as I said, much more than I expected to. The atmosphere was really beautiful and I just love the connection to the art and I'm really enjoying reading books about art at the moment. So I have another book to show you in a minute that is a book about art. I'm glad that this was a successful read after the other two were kind of a flop. So I have finished this. I haven't really made any more progress on this. In fact, I haven't made any more progress, but I'm gonna make dinner now and then I intend to just sit down and read this for the rest of the night, maybe. I'm really into watching travel vlogs at the moment and they just, they suck me in. But I'm gonna watch one travel vlog with dinner. One. One. And then I'm gonna read this. That That is what, is, it's happening. That is what's happening. It's happening. Because I need to wrap this vlog up. This is probably gonna expand into tomorrow now. I really do need to wrap this vlog up, but I've still been productive. I've still got a lot done today. I bought a book yesterday in Tame. This is Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Malors. Love the cover of this, love the minimalist of it. This is a book about art, I'm so here for it. I've heard many good things about this. It just came out in paperback, so I am seeing a lot of people talking about it all over again. It sounds amazing. I think I'm basing a lot of that as well on the reviews on the back of this book. It's a devastatingly human book. Coco Malors is a strong writer of wit and sophistication who creates with assurance a jangling world where friendships both matter and falter and where how to love remains the deepest preoccupation of all. An irresistible, unputdownable page turner of a novel. A love letter to New York, a love letter to love. This is a complex, funny, deeply felt, beautifully written debut. So this follows a woman who her student visa has run out and she doesn't have any money. And then she meets Frank, who's 20 years older than her. His life is full of success that she lacks and he offers her the opportunity to be happy, to have the freedom to paint and to stay in New York. She offers him a life imbued with beauty and art and hopefully a reason to cut back on his drinking. So the two run into a relationship that they didn't necessarily expect to have. And this is about how their meeting changes things for better or for worse. It has a love of art. It sounds like it's definitely gonna have a lot of conversation starters and it's gonna be very interesting. I'm very intrigued to read this one. I'd like to read this one quite soon. I'm gonna go cook dinner now because I have been on live sprints since 12 and it's currently 7.39. That was very precise, but I did just check my watch, 7.39. So I'm gonna go cook and just chill and then read and then update you tomorrow and we're gonna pretend that I did it all today. I'm not necessarily expecting to finish that book anymore. I really want to, because the more I read, the less I wanna take it to Paris with me because I'm gonna have less left of it. But I don't know, I'll work it out. I'll see what happens. I'll see whether I feel like I'm gonna be forcing it too much. And if I am, then I'll just bring it with me and it's all good. We need to talk. I did not finish this book. It is now Monday, I go to Paris today. 
and I'm bringing this book with me. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to finish it last night. I didn't want to force myself to feel like I had to finish it last night because I'd had such a busy day of doing stuff. I also did just want to chit, 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 sit and chill, chit, sit and chill. I just wanted to chit. <laughs> I wanted to sit down, I wanted to relax, I just wanted to watch some YouTube videos and just feel like I was calming myself before what I know is going to be a very busy few days, so I didn't end up reading last night. Whilst reading does calm me, I'd spent all day doing various different reading tasks, so I just wanted to have a little bit of a bit of a brain downtime, so I haven't finished this, I will be bringing it to Paris with me, I will hopefully finish it in Paris, I don't know, I mean the train journey is two and a half hours each way, so that gives me lots of time, I'm probably going to be buying books when I'm out there as well, obviously all will be included in the vlog, I'm really liking this so far, it's definitely I think my favourite of the week so far, which is annoying that I haven't finished it, but I'll give you my final thoughts. Looking back on the week, I think Paris by the Book was definitely the worst book that I read. I think thinking about it more, it felt like the author was trying to put his views and opinions on how women act or should act onto the main character, and that's why she became so unlikable, which just is a big ugh for me. That one I really didn't like, but this one I just, I love the sense of community and the love of friendship that this has. The found family element is really there and I really like that and I love reading about all the authors. I'm now interested in looking more into James Joyce as an author because this is heavily about his work and how his book Ulysses was really controversial and was banned and that is most of the plot for this book in that our main character is trying to publish this book for him and the risks that that has. So I am kind of tempted to read Ulysses now, it's over a thousand pages, it's a 30 hour audiobook but I'm kind of thinking about it, I don't know, but I'm gonna wrap this vlog up here because I need to do so many things. So thank you for watching, I hope you have enjoyed, I hope that you're looking forward to my Paris vlog, I think that this is all like coming out consecutively, like I think once this is live the next video will be my Paris vlog. I don't know, I don't know, but I will be posting lots of updates on social media. In fact, I'll have been by the time you're watching this. Have I been? I don't know. Yes, I'll have been, I'll have been. <laughs> don't know my own schedule. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you have read any of these books and your thoughts, and if you've got any other books to recommend to me. You can also subscribe to see more of my face on your feed, and link down below you can find my Patreon where I do lots of extra content, including weekly live shows, and you can also find my online shop. Thank you so much for watching, keep smiling, and stay positive.